Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Rafi West. Um, I want to talk about um, something about, it's kind of like, it's like, where do you want to call it quits? Where would you like to retire? And um, there's a couple of reasons I'm saying that. You know, number one is it's good to look a little bit down the road. Even if um, you're not close to calling it quits, even if you're going to do the old traditional um, at age, uh, six, what is it, six five, six six now, it's good to look down the road a little bit. So um, lately, I've been looking into Alaska, and um, for starters, um, you know, I learned a few things about Alaska, and um, there's a couple of things I want to say about it. Is number one is um, I think it will toughen you up um, and I talked about this in previous videos before about how we all need to toughen up and um, they also say now I ran into they say that Alaska calls you at some point in your life um, now I'm not into superstition or anything like that but it's interesting that that's my latest idea you know calling it quits out there um, now I've never been but um, Part of this message is that how it will toughen you up. It will toughen you up because um, some of the stuff you do out here, like even though it's in the U.S., it almost feels like it's another country. Um, you know, when you're there, they call the rest of it the lower 48. Um, you know, uh, some of their slang I was looking into even, um, if they say outside, it doesn't mean outside like here. When we say we're going outside, they're going outside of Alaska. Um, but it toughens you up in a way that we should all be toughening up anyway. Not like, for example, um, there's no such thing as not taking your vitamins in Alaska, specifically vitamin D three I have my hand here like I'm holding it but I'm not vitamin d3 um, which um, is measured in international units and um, we get it naturally from the Sun most people are deficient in it especially um, during like the winter seasons or um, like in the Northeast you have four seasons now in a place like Alaska during the winter, sometimes it's mainly dark. You only have like a handful of hours of light um, in the middle of the day. And if um, you're at the office or something, you don't get any sunlight at all unless maybe looking out the window. So things like taking your vitamins, vitamin D3 especially, there's no such thing as that. Whereas here, you know, in the lower 48 um, you know not everyone takes vitamins or you may forget sometimes although you shouldn't um, you may forget sometimes things like that so um, it's uh, that's one of the things Num another thing is you have to have a routine which we all have and we all should have especially when we're free because um, we're talking about here now calling it quits out there, right? As it's calling me now. Meaning, um, here, the option is, you know, we have people who get um, gym memberships. They don't use them. Um, some people stay home for days on end. Out there, you have to get out because cabin fever right here out there is real. You're going to be in your house so much, sometimes because of the elements, you know, the further north you go, like um, Fairbanks, stuff like that, it could get to minus like 60 degrees in that season. Um, so you need to get outside, whether it's go for a walk, which I do out here. I go for a lot of strolls at times. Uh, go for a ride in your vehicle, but you have to get out over there. So I think that's good. If you're call, if you're talking about let's say retiring, you know, calling it quits out there, it will keep you active. So it will keep you active. 
There's no such thing as not taking your vitamins. I mean, if you do, you're going to run into situations where you could end up uh, depressed, aches, pains, um, and you could even end up with worse things than that. Um, you know, in most other places, at least you get maybe sufficient sun to get some of your vitamin D, but over there. So I wonder how, if they have any home test kits for vitamin D out there, I want to look that up. And also how often does the doctor recommend you get tested for that? And is it, and is it just automatic to get you know, a recommendation and in some cases a prescription strength of vitamin D because I know if you're really low, they give you like 50,000 IU international units. Um, and I think you take it like once a week or something. Um, that's if you're like really on the low scale of vitamin D. Um, it depends on the labs, what number, but if you go to the doctor even now, get your vitamin D levels check very important vitamin b12 might be another one out there for um your cells and just energy rejuvenate the mitochondria in your cells so you have to go out and um you have to even be better at reading people here's another thing and here's why they have this thing of you're in it together out there because it's challenging so neighbors look out for each other and stuff. So I hear if you make a friend in Alaska, you make a friend for life. Therefore, you have to get good at reading people because if you let a high narcissistic person into your life or a high Machiavellian person or a high psychopathic person or even a super high anxious person into your life, you're going to get into trouble. So if you're going to make a friend for life in Alaska because they have this community of we're in this together, you've got to know how to read people. Um, you can't just go out there and, and just accept anyone's help still, even though you have a lot of solitude and it's isolated and neighbors may be away from you. You don't have that luxury of just choosing anyone in to your life you still have to choose the good ones you may have to search more because um you know the population of alaska is like 700,000 people some odd 700 something thousand and it is a humongous state it's bigger than i think california texas and montana combined okay so um So, you're going to have this sense of community and people. You're in this together. You look out for each other. You help each other out. But, since the population is smaller and it's so spread out, here's another thing that's going to make you tough enough. If something happens, and it's usually like, from what I see, like tricky stuff, right? So, when I say tough enough, it's not more like... Um, the crime and stuff, you know, I haven't looked into the crime much. I'm sure there's still gangs. It, remember, remember, it is still a state. It's not another country, although it may seem it. If you research about it, it may seem like it should be or it is. So, so yeah, another thing is if a tricky thing's happen, you got to toughen up and you're on your own. You know, if a tree falls in your backyard, you may not have someone else for miles around. Or they may be, especially in the inclement weather before they get to you, it might be a while. So you have to have, you know, the chainsaws, the loppers, um, things like that. They call them loppers. Uh, you know, I think they were grass cutters, big ones. They look like big scissors. So you have to have that and you have to know how to use them. Um, you're on your own. It's not like out here, you know, you can call 911 and you got, you know, um, LA's finest NYPD coming to help. You're kind of on your own, you know, to face a tricky or 
tough situation like the tree falling in your backyard the um a power outages is another thing here in the northeast and stuff like that you can get by on a power outage a few batteries if not you can still make it to the store even without a flashlight things like that over there you got to be prepared for this you have to have a plan b there's no such thing as not having a plan b over there or it could be a matter of life and death you know you got to uh, some of them you always got to have like a secondary power um supply you know um building redundancy into your life having a second of that you have to have this because it could be life and death i saw how sometimes they warm up and i guess even with the heat on if it's minus 60 outside you know you're talking about thermals you're talking about in a bed you put a even a sleeping bag in the bed you put yourself in a thermals a scar around your neck um you know i also saw someone puts like a yoga mat in the bed to be able to um, capture even more heat so oh and then here's another thing food food um not only is a little more expensive because it's hard to transport things into canada but also, maybe you have to start living off the land a little bit. Learn how to pick the right berries or fruits or mushrooms. Because um, you got to not spend all your loot. It's expensive. Um, I don't know if it's a free-for-all at the same time when people go get groceries. But I suspect it may be. You may get tips from people on how to um when to go shopping where to go things like that um so you also have to toughen up in um you have to learn not to eat a lot like in the lower 48 where most people they love to eat um you know they eat a lot they gourmandize everything so you got to um keep that in mind as well it will control your eating form of toughening up as well not be so spoiled and eating all the time um, like we are in the lower 48 um, so all these things are forms of like toughening up where like I feel like in the rest of the states you have an option for these things right I mean you really shouldn't but I like this look and if Alaska is calling me because it reminds me of how you need to toughen up so can alaska teach us something about toughing toughening up i guess should be a good title for this video and i say yes you know there's other things i don't want to keep this video you know i don't want to make it too lengthy but you know having a routine controlling yourself eating taking your vitamins learning how to read people um you know having redundancy in things in your life a backup of everything two of everything you know knowing how to fend for yourself because you may be on your own when something tricky or challenging happens if you're stuck in the ice in snow you, you know you got to know how to maneuver your vehicle in ice some people can't even maneuver that here in rain oh it's raining i'm not going to go in my vehicle you know oh it's raining i'm not even coming over you know let alone go in the vehicle i'm not coming over as if you know they'll multiply when they get wet or something um you you know over there you gotta go and you gotta toughen it up you know, um, you got to learn how to maneuver. You got to know how to get yourself out of situations. So in a way, to summarize this, I think it could keep you tough. Things that we should be doing here, even if you're not going to go to Alaska to reside, retire, or even visit. Um, but I 
think it will call you because it's calling me now in a weird way. Um, yeah, Alaska, I knew it's always been there, but um, I like researching about it. Um, the people seem nice. You still have to read people. I will have that same approach. And um, yeah, I mean, um, I just listed off those handful of things. So what do you guys think? Can Alaska toughen you up? Are these things we should be doing in the rest of the world as well? What do you guys think? I think so. I think it would be a good challenge in toughening up, um, no matter at what age either. Um, all right, so I just thought um, I'd give you my latest thoughts on where I'm looking at, what's calling me, and what I think about it from a personal development standpoint, those handful of things that you should be doing anyway over there. You have to, or else you're going to be, you're going to be, you know, maybe, maybe in trouble, or you're going to have an extra challenging time. So anyway, this is Rafi West. I hope you guys enjoy this little talk. Let me know in the comments, do you think that Alaska can toughen you up? Do you think you're Alaska tough already? And do you think you should be doing these things? Um, I think it's a good thing and um, something to think about. All right, this is Rafi West. You guys take care. Have a good one. And uh, until uh, the next talk. All right, guys. Peace.